Kenichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Bard, keep bringing you episode 143 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. So in the last 24 hours, we've had a major bombshell drop in regards to Power Rangers. Now, while there hasn't been any official announcement on this, Evan seems to suggest that what I'm about to tell you is indeed true, and at this point, I see no reason not to believe that it's true, and maybe I'll be wrong in the future, maybe a lot of other people are wrong, but I think it's just too good not to talk about here. Um, and specifically, uh, we found out that Saban Brands has trademarked the name Power Rangers Ninja Steel. So, what does that mean? That means that we are 99.99% likely to get a Ninja adaptation as opposed to a Tokyuja adaptation. And there are a lot of things to really cover with this topic. Because as soon as we find out that we're getting a Ninja adaptation, that really opens up a, a lot of things about skipping Sentai, what we're going to do with Ninja, where does Tokyuja and uh, Go Buster eventually fit into the Power Rangers universe. Th there's just a lot of things to go ahead and talk about. And I'm going to try and cover as much of it as I can, at least in this podcast, maybe down the line, we're, we're going to go ahead and talk about it a little bit more. First and foremost, again, it sounds like... Um, we are going to go ahead and get a Ninja adaptation. Uh, with the name, I'm not really crazy about the name because Power Rangers Ninja Steel, and then we're going to get Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel or Power Rangers Ninja Super Steel. It, it doesn't really sound that good, but honestly, it's not the name that's going to go ahead and count. It's going to be what you're going to do with the story. However, the Ninja Steel Rangers, they don't sound as good. Maybe we're called the Steel Rangers, which sounds a little bit better, but... You know, whatever, that's going to be figured out uh, later on. As I said, it is the story that's going to go ahead and count. And as I pointed out in a previous podcast, you know, I think one of the things they really need to do in adapting, you know, from Ninja into Ninja Steel is they do need to keep that Japanese element of the series. Now, I am caught up on all the Ninja episodes uh, up here into mid January. Uh, and we have about three, maybe four episodes left to the end of the series. Now, from what I can tell, it's going to be very easy to adapt this into Power Rangers. This isn't like, you know, Go Kaiser, where there are a lot of Sentai teams that don't matter, and, and, and we'll get it. And, and that's something that when Kara got into and I got into uh, a while back. But it doesn't seem that hard to adapt. It's not going to be as difficult as Shinkanger was, where there was all this Japanese mythos into it. Um, that we have to kind of gloss over or ignore completely. Like, again, you know, calling kanji power symbols, which I think is one of the more egregious things they did in that season. I think you can honestly take this for a Western audience and adapt it without really losing anything from the original source material. Because, let's be honest, what Nininger has in terms of story is based on a modern mythology as opposed to an ancient mythology. Specifically, the villains are just a clan of, of ninjas who have become demons. Uh, our heroes are modern-day characters who have trained to be ninjas, and they have their own brand of ninjutsu as opposed to being... Um, you know, traditional ninjas, which is something we see in a lot of media. I mean, the Ninja Turtles are not technically ninjas. They are a modern interpretation of what a ninja is, uh, because nobody is really a ninja, if you actually go by the definition of, of what they were, what they stood for, and so on and so forth. But we're not going to get into that here. In any case, I think adapting is going to be relatively straightforward here, but what I really want them to do, and this is something that if they actually consider doing it and say, okay, let's go in this direction, actually put time and effort and research into it, I, I think it will be special and significant. And specifically, I do think that one of the Rangers, I, I really believe that the Red Ranger should be Japanese, that there needs to be a story here where they're taking five modern-day people and turning them into modern-day ninjas and giving them ninja training. Now, here's, here's what my thought is what they should probably go ahead and do. At bare minimum, 
I think for the four Rangers who are not the Red Rangers should be of other cultures, black, white, Hispanic, whatever you want to go ahead and do. But the Red Ranger should be Japanese. And in the Red Ranger, we need to tie in that grandfather character. We need to tie in the father character. that He is at the, the end of a lineage of ninjas. That He maybe is the last ninja. That that's not a title that you're striving for, a status, but that is what he is. That he is the last true ninja in the world. And that his grandfather has to teach him how to be a ninja and has to gather other people to be ninjas don't make it like uh samurai where they are part of a samurai lineage yet they're not japanese and again that's egregious for a number of reasons but the biggest one is they don't actually comment on what a samurai really is and i think this series needs to define what a ninja is but point out that because it's modern day that this teenager or young adult that's going to be our Red Ranger, it's Japanese, has lost touch or doesn't understand what a ninja is, and throughout the series, while he and the others have potential, they have to be their own ninjas while still understanding and respecting the history of a ninja. Which is why I do think they do need to have a little bit of a history lesson in there. I mean, I don't see any reason why, as part of exposition in the first or second episode, to just say, hey, this is what a ninja is, this is what our family did, we no longer do it anymore, but now that this villain has been re has returned, then we need to go ahead and teach you guys that you need to become your own ninja. You have to be your own thing. And I think that's what they need to go ahead and do. Now, can they go in a different direction, completely uh, do something different, akin to, say, the Alien Rangers, who were based on Ninja Sentai theme, but given something different, they could. I just don't see that working in this context, because its context is very unique. They could go the way of Power Rangers Ninja Storm, but with my criticism there is, again, they didn't describe what a ninja is or what exactly they're training for. They really got far away from what ninjas actually are to make their own thing, which is fine. But, but I think this is the best example where you can take elements of the Sentai story, adapt them for American audience, create new characters, but you got to have that core of the Sentai here, which is they are ninjas, th that, that's what this is based on, but there has to be an exploration of what a ninja is and what it means to be ninja. And of course, you can tie that into any other value that you want, whether it's Mega Forces, the humanity will survive uh, if we go ahead and work together uh, or, or anything like that. You, you got to have a theme to it, but I think part of that theme has to be tied into self-identity. And, and that's what I think it, it should happen is that we have characters who are ninjas. What is their self-identity? What is this Japanese person's self-identity? Because you could easily make him a stereotype, or you can easily make him a person who has this heritage, un knows about it, but doesn't understand it, and has to figure out what is his self-identity. Am I Japanese? Am I a ninja? Or am I David? Or whatever they're going to go ahead and name him. Um, whatever the case is going to go ahead and be, I, I think maybe self-identity would be a good theme to go ahead and look at in here. In the way Time Force did Destiny, who are you is something they can go ahead and explore. Because, again, with the thing, you have the ancient tradition of the ninja with the modern day, we don't hide and we're very brazen, we're multicolored, and we have giant robots and all that. So you have to find a way to mix it. And it, it's a good lesson for Power Rangers because you have to set your self-identity uh, because you could be like Sentai and just translate the scripts word from word, uh, or you can create your own thing with those elements, and I think that's a good way to go with this series. Because, um, again, not too much of it's going to be bogged down by tradition or things that don't make sense in the way that Samurai did, but at the same time, there is kanji, there, there's a lot of things in there, um, that they're going to have to address at some point. And I have no idea how this will tie in with the Gold Ranger, uh, how his story is going to go ahead and be. But again, I think if your starting point is Japanese Red Ranger, the end of a, a ninja legacy, uh, understanding self-identity, and, and trying to be ninjas in a modern world, I think if you have that start point, I think it'll be relatively easy to figure out the rest of it as we go along throughout the series. 
So that's basically where I have uh, my thoughts are in regards to, to Ninja Steel. And you know, the Ninja Steel Megazord, that's not such a bad name now that I'm just thinking about it. But I need something that's not so much a mouthful, you know, because... Again, we had Power Rangers Turbo, so we had the Turbo Megazord. We had Power Rangers Zeo, the Zeo Megazord. Heck, even with Power Rangers in space, we had the Astro Megazord. The Space Megazord doesn't sound good, but Astro Megazord does sound good. We need to go back to simple names. Um, you know, you could have easily called this Power Rangers Shinobi, and then you had the Shinobi Megazord and the Shinobi Ultra Zord. I think that would have worked just as fine, you know? And again, kids don't know what Shinobi is. So what? Nobody really had a clue what the heck a Megaforce was. N they didn't know what a samurai was. I mean, and who knows what the hell a Zeo was in the first place. You know, I used to have a screen name called Zeo6, and people thought my name was Zoe6, or Zero6. Anyway, that that's a completely different topic. All right, so here's the other issue that we have with knowing that it's Need Ninja. Again, 99.99% .99 sure that's where we're going with this direction. So once again, we skipped uh, uh, a Sentai series, and this time it's Tokuja. Now here's the thing: I, I really want somebody to point me in the direction of this information because I can't find it. There's no documentation anybody put online, as far as I can know. I have no official source. Uh, but again, if somebody has this, please tell me. It was always the understanding in the fandom up until we got to, uh, you know, dial charge that they could not skip a Sentai, that the contract with Toei said that you had to use every Sentai every year, that you just can't pick and choose what you want, that you have to adapt X, Y, if you want to go ahead and get Z footage. And it seems like there's this recent trend where Saban is either breaking that or they finally decide to, we're just going to skip this because we don't like it mentality. And I just don't understand that. I don't understand why you feel the need to skip a Sentai. Now, a lot of you are going to point out, well, it's because toy sales are bad. And, and, and I'm just going to say, I don't think that is the main cause. And I don't think that is the main reason, nor should it be. Because if Power Rangers was a toy commercial, like everybody claims it is, then there would be no point of a story. Granted, Mega Force would fit into that category. Um, but again, I don't believe it's a toy commercial. Otherwise, they wouldn't put half the time and effort that they do into it. Um, because, you know, I'm going to be honest, G.I. Joe and Transformers, while they were selling toys, and that's documented that that's what they were trying to do, they were trying to push toys on kids, they at least had a really good story to back up a lot of what they were doing. And I see no evidence to point that Power Rangers is trying to sell us toys, sell us toys, sell us toys, because in a lot of cases, they don't make a lot of these toys for them to sell, and then they make toys that are not even in the show, and toys that are not even show accurate. So I'm not going to entertain that at this time. What I will entertain is that some people believe that the American audiences wouldn't like some of the design concept and choices that were made in both Go Buster and Tokuger. Now, I say Go Buster and Tokuger because I'm going to put this under an umbrella for both of them because I heard the same criticisms when Go Buster was skipped that I'm hearing about Tokuger, again, not related to the toys. One of the criticisms, and we did a video on this long ago, um, back on the tavern when we were talking about the potential adaptation of Tokuger into a Power Ranger season, one of the things out there was that kids would not relate to trains as children in Japan would because, again, trains are part of everyday life here in Japan, whether they're streetcar, subway cars, the Shinkansen, or whatever. Um, trains are a major part of Japanese commerce and travel. Heck, I haven't had a car in six months. I've had to go everywhere, either on foot or by train. So I know how important they are. But I would argue, as I did then, dinosaurs are not part of a child's everyday life. Uh, samurai are not part of a child's everyday life. Going into space is not part of a child's everyday life. Um, let's see, what's it? time traveling is not part of a child's everyday life. Uh, I, I don't find that argument reasonable based on what we've had in the past. If you're going to go ahead and claim that trains are not going to sell well just because American children don't use trains that often then you have to apply that to every Power Ranger season. So why didn't they skip Time Force 
in favor of going from light speed rescue right to right, right to wild force because well kids love animals but time travel oh no it, kids kids nowadays you know that's not part of their lives or why skip wild force and, and just go to dino uh thunder because you know hey ninjas aren't part of uh, american children's everyday lives i mean to me what it sounds like is they're coming up with excuses to skip something that they don't particularly like and i can think of a number of reasons why people don't like them because i've heard criticisms about things of the aesthetic of the show let's look at go buster people were pissed that they had these you know leather pleather suits whatever and stuff um they didn't like the zords because they were overly complicated and stuff uh or it was too uh too science fictiony and not enough of the fantasy that we normally got or tokuja people don't like the, the suits or anything or they think the zords look stupid and all that and you know i was in that camp where i didn't like the suits when tokuja first came out and i wasn't really thrilled about the zords but but frankly, was it been two, almost three years since Tokyo um, ended or something? You know, again, the failing of that show to me was the story and the characters. It wasn't the suits. It wasn't the weapons. It wasn't the Zords. It, that those had absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, I, I really think that the big failing is, is the story and the characters. And if you take a look at the aesthetic, it grew on me. It really did. I criticized the suits and everything. But, you know, after this time, it works out well. I don't have a problem with it. And, you know, the thing is... I would actually think that they would want to do Go Buster and Tokyo simply because they're not tied down as much with a specific story that you have to tell. Because again, going back to what we had with uh, Samurai, they had a specific story you had to tell based on the footage that was there. Could they have done something else? Well, yeah, with a little time and effort, they could do that. But Again, that those were unique circumstances. I mean, you could easily do something you did with Lost Galaxy. Take an Earth and nature-based Sentai and turn it into a space opera. I don't see a reason why you couldn't set up, you know, Power Rangers Rail Force or whatever, uh, you know, as in, you know, another planet or taking place in space, especially since we have the Galaxy line uh, and th you could always film a train traveling through space. I mean, that's something you can do. And heck, didn't the Transformers, since we talked about them before, have have a character called Astro Train. I mean, you could call that Power Rangers Astro Rail or something, you know, where they travel through the stars on a train. Now, that would be something. And that actually gets into a topic I'm going to talk about later regarding uh, space seasons. Uh, but yeah, you could t totally do that. And, you know, look at Go Buster again. It's set up in a way that you could do just about anything with it that you're not tied to anything specific. I mean, you get yeah, you got machines as villains, but that's about it. I mean, again, I'm in that camp where I think that they should have it on Marinoi. It needs to be an alien planet that we need to get back into space, um, which, again, is going to be something I'm going to cover later on here. Um, I just think that what they're doing is probably short-sighted, but also a bit petty uh, on a lot of levels that... I don't like it, therefore I'm not going to bother to adapt it. And let's look at, you know, just the history of Power Rangers up before, let's say, Disney got a hold of the franchise. Let's look at the first 10 years. Now, I, I think it's no stretch to say that people at the time, and, and probably still today, don't like the aesthetic of Lost Galaxy. They think the Zords are too blocky. Again, Raptor and I both pointed out uh, that the Megazord looked like a knockoff Megazord and not a real Megazord. Um, another criticism was that the suits looked horrible. The Charlie Brown designs. Uh, Raptor had that, I think, as his worst uh, Power Rangers Sentai costume of all time. And I know people who feel that way, despite the fact, I mean, I like them. I think they're okay. I, I don't have no major issue with it. And of course, you know, so many years, you know, what, fi 15 years or something like that since Lost Galaxy, it's one of those things that just kind of grows on you and you get used to it. But imagine... After Power Rangers in space, somebody said, you know what, these galaxy costumes, they suck. They really do. So let's skip them and go to the Lightspeed Rescue stuff. Let's not even bother with Giga Man because we don't like the suits, we don't like the Zords, and, you know, it's just going to be too hard to adapt. I mean, imagine if they did that back then. Now, they couldn't do it with the timeline, and I'm going to get into that as well. But imagine they just said the pettiest of reasons is the reason we didn't get Giga Man Cross a uh, Gigaman adaptation. 
And if they did that back then, then we wouldn't get Light, uh, Lost Galaxy. Yeah, we get Lightspeed Rescue, which I think is a solid season, and I really like it. But I would uh, also point out that Lost Galaxy was definitely up there in its ambition and what it was able to go ahead and accomplish uh, with its characters and its story. So we would have missed out on that. What did we miss out on when Go Busters was skipped? What did we miss out on um, with Tokuger being skipped now? I do feel that we're missing out on some stuff. And even with what we have with uh, Go Sager and Go Kaiger footage, what did we miss out on by not actually having them uh, as two seasons? You know, Super Mega Force being Go Sager all together, and maybe Power Rangers Pirate Force or whatever uh, for the Go Kaiger adaptation. How, how much of that did we end up missing? because of these unusual rules and, and petty reasons. And I'm going to say this as well, because I think the blame, and, and a lot of people are to blame here, and I, but I'm not, maybe blame is too strong a word, but the problem started with Disney, because Disney gave up, is, is what they did. Now, whether or not it's true that they didn't want to do Samurai because it was too difficult, it was too Japanese, yada yada, whatever, because they ended RPM and went right into the Mighty Morphin revision, which was a total waste of everybody's time, money, and effort, I think. Because they did that, and Saban had to scrounge up and do what they can to essentially catch up with the Sentai, and because of the contract with Nickelodeon, who I'm also going to put into this situation because there's another problem, because of what Disney did in doing the revision and what Nickelodeon is imposing on Saban because of the 40-episode rule and only 20 episodes per season, they've essentially caused this problem where we have to be in a certain place where we can now discredit Sentai for the pettiest and the smallest of reasons. That... Again, you can argue about greed and toys and how much money is going to go ahead and sell. But the fact of the matter is, is that they at least put effort into them with what they're given. I like the idea that a bunch of writers are together in a room and they say, here's the Japanese, watch all the episodes, see what you can go ahead and do and make out of this. And by the way, there's no other option. We have to work with this, which... Is, is a problem that I, I we had with Megaforce. I keep bringing it up because I've watched Linkara's video, and so it's fresh in my mind, is that they did have two seasons of footage. They burned through it too quickly, and they were just kind of all over the place in what they were doing. Now, had they had a restriction, they said, yeah, you can only do the Ghost Sager stuff, then, then we might have gotten something a little bit different. And had we gotten 40, 50 episodes like we had in the past, again, we might have gotten something a lot better out of it. I just think that because of what Disney did and, and of course, what Nickelodeon did, is put the franchise in, in a pretty tight predicament. Now, as long as they're able to produce good stories, it's not going to matter as much. And right now, Dial Charge, again, is in my good graces and is in the good graces of the franchise in general. But uh, there's just something to be said about having to work with what you're given and not having to, to pick and choose. Um, and, you know, I just find it so odd, too, that they want to pick and choose for current shows, and they don't consider maybe going back and doing Jetman or Bioman or something. Or, I don't know, that's a topic for a different discussion. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're putting this predicament. As long as the stories are good, I, I, I'm not going to mind it as much. But, again, what, what, what we got with Samurai... Uh, the revision by Morphin, which was horrendous, and, and of course what we got with Megaforce. You know, a lot of people will be upset that we skipped Sentai and, and don't give them an opportunity here. Um, but but I'm definitely really upset uh, regardless of, of... I mean, if the, again, if the story's good, it's going to be all right. I, I'm not going to be as upset. But I just kind of think that... Look at it this way. Let me, let me put it this way. You know, imagine you have a million dollars saved in the bank, but you're still making a job where you make like a, a million dollars a year. You know, you're a college football coach in the South or something. Um, you know, I don't know of anybody that would just take the money that they have, put in the bank, and never, ever, ever touch it. That they wouldn't invest it in some way, and they wouldn't uh, use it uh, for some future gain or, or anything like that. And that's kind of the way that I feel that they're working with the Sentai, is that they've basically put this money in Scrooge's money vault 
uh, and and basically say we're not going to do anything with it. We're going to lock it up, not even have to bother with it in the future. And you know, frankly, when you think of it too, what does that say about the the, the future of the franchise? Let's say. You know, I don't see a reason why Zhuolzhi would not be adapted once we eventually get there. Um, because it's animals, it's like Wild Force, and what, it'll be the 25th anniversary at that time. So, yeah, it, it would it would tie in, into it fairly well. Th the point that, that I'm going to make with this is that, let's assume that Zhuolzhi, the 41st Sentai, and the 43rd Sentai, let's just say they all bombed, that they all sucked, that they had horrible toy sales, that everybody had the designs, everybody had the stories, and maybe Sentai's on its last leg like it was in the mid-90s before Car Ranger came up. Let's say that there is that perfect storm of events where all three of the Sentai seasons suck. Well, what's Saban going to do? Are they just going to adapt the next one, say, damn it, we'll just go with whatever's there? Are they going to pick and choose from those three and just say, well, this was the least offensive? Or will they go back to something like Tokyo or Go Buster and try to adapt it, uh, you know, for, for, for whatever they're going to go ahead and do? It, it just seems to me that if something happens with the Sentai, that it's going to put... Saban in a pretty awkward position of what they're going to do next. And I think when there's uncertainty there, that there'll be uncertainty with the franchise. Because, again, if you have five Sentai to adapt and you got options, there's going to be some back and forth, there's going to be some indecision, there's going to be some problems. But if you have to adapt the very next Sentai, and that's all you have, I think that ultimately works better for the process uh, and as for the fans, then having all these options and not knowing what to do. Because, again, frankly, they had so many options with Megaforce uh, through Gosager and Gokaiger, but they didn't know what to do with it, and look what did happen. So, okay, let, let's let's reel this in. Let's, let's go ahead and, and end this today. So, ultimate conclusion here. They're skipping Tokuger. That's uh, almost certainty. Uh, Ninja Steel is our next title. I, I hope they do something good with the characterization of the story of Ninja Steel uh, to show that there is progress, that they've taken Giant Charge, they've learned. Because, again, they've had four years where they learned all these mistakes Dial Charge is, being, is getting really good. I'm going to finish up the V-Logs and see how much better it gets. Uh, Dial Supercharge, I think everybody's looking forward to that to see where the series heads from here. And, you know, uh, let's see what they do with feature adaptations, uh, how this is going to go ahead and work out. But I will say this, and this is also going to be another video, I think. Uh, I blame Disney and Nickelodeon for a lot of the problems that we have right now. Um, uh, other issues I do blame with the writers and the creative staff, but putting these undue restrictions on us or causing these complications and scheduling that's also hurting Power Rangers and that stuff that is out of Saban's control. And I do feel bad for them because it seems to me they make these bad decisions because of these outside restrictions that they can't do anything about. So that's all I have to go ahead and say on this topic. Again, I know it's a little all over the place from where we started, but I'd like to get, you know, again, my full thoughts on what this means as a whole, because it is more than just the title of a series. So that's all I have to go ahead and say. Uh, I want to know what you guys think. Is Ninja Steel a good title? Do you agree or disagree with anything that I've said? And uh, are you more interested in the end of Dial Charge or the beginning of Ninja Steel? Uh, comment below. Let me know. Otherwise, thank you for listening, have a good evening, and the tavern is now closed.